Good day, everyone. Welcome to the first ever vlog for Reinforced Concrete Design. This is Engineer Ramela B. Ramirez, and we shall be discussing for today Reinforced Concrete Principle, Design Principles. So in the Reinforced Concrete, we have three failure modes of structures. We have over-reinforced, under reinforced and the balanced condition. When the beam is over reinforced, the failure mode is sudden, brittle failure. And it should be carefully noted by any structural designer because the failure is initiated by the crushing of concrete followed by the in disintegration of the compression zone. While at the same time, a very large area of steel has not reached its yield point. So in order for us to prevent the brittle failure in an over-reinforced concrete structure, the steel reinforcement should yield first before concrete strain reaches a value of 0 0.003. Now we have the second condition is the under reinforced. When the beam is under reinforced lightly, the failure mode is also brittle. When the tensile stress in the concrete exceeds the modulus of rupture, the concrete cracks and immediately releases the tensile forces it carries. The lightly stressed steel carry this additional stresses and the steel will snap and total rupture of the section will occur suddenly. Then we have the last condition, the balanced condition. The balanced condition is when the beam has a moderate percentage of steel, which is usually between minimum and maximum values, followed by the code. And the failure mode is initiated by a yielding of steel while the strains in the concrete are relatively low. Beams of this type can undergo large deflections before final collapse will occur. This ductile mode of failure is the only acceptable mode which should be adopted by practicing engineers. So again, in summary, over-reinforced failure mode or reinforced concrete beams will be in sudden failure. It is a brittle failure initiated by the crushing of concrete with the disintegration of the compression zone. While the steel has not yet reached its yield point. And if you would want to prevent this condition, the steel should yield first before the concrete will reach the maximum strain of 0 0.003. Then for the under reinforced, you have brittle failure and the tensile force will be immediately released. The lightly stressed steel will, you, uh, will uh, have additional stress and that the steel will snap and there will be there will be total rupture the balanced condition is the only acceptable mode of failure in the design so while the steel reaches its yield stress the strain in concrete is relatively low and not in the maximum condition so this is how you draw the figure for balanced steel of rectangular cross section. 
So of course I have given here the figure for the rectangular cross section. So this is what we have here. The balance is still for a, for a rectangular cross section. This is how you draw the figure. You have here the value for B, which is the width of the beam. And we are using effective depth instead of the total height of the beam. Then you have here the maximum strain for concrete, which is 0 0.003. And this is the yield strain of stress of the steel. So take note that the neutral axis is located at the point where there is no strain. And that is at a distance C from the extreme compression fiber. So this is what you call as the strain diagram, while this one is the stress diagram. So the stress diagram is given by 0.85 FC prime or 85% of the compressive strength of concrete. And then of course you have, if we are going to draw the three dimensional figure for the concrete stress block. So this will be your concrete stress block. We're in, we would have the we would have this value for the width of the beam. And then of course you have here the value for A. So we are going to equate tension with the compression. Tension should be equal to compression. The compressive force is created by the concrete stress block, which is basically equal to the volume of the concrete stress block. And that the tension is equal to the product of the area of the reinforcing steel bars and the yield strength of steel. So this is again a figure for the rectangular beam subjected to ultimate moment. We have here the cross section. This value for B is the width. This is the value for D, which is the depth, effective, effective depth of the beam. The effective depth is taken from the centroid of the area of the re reinforcing steel bars up to the extreme compression fiber. So that is the effective depth. We are not using this concrete cover because it is assumed that it would have no structural capacity at all. So the purpose of the concrete cover is just to cover, of course, the reinforcing steel bars in order to avoid corrosion. So now for the strain diagram, this is the strain diagram, which I also mentioned a while ago, wherein you have the limitation or the maximum strain for concrete, which is equals to 0 0.003. And that the neutral axis is located also in the point where there is no strain at all. And then of course you have the value for C. Now, aside from that, we also have the figure for the actual stress. The actual stress is given by Fc prime here. And then, of course, you have the value for Fy here. So this is the actual stress that could happen to the compression side. And this is the stress on the tension side. But in the design for rectangular beam, we are just using the rectangular equivalent compressive stress block, wherein we are considering 85%, only 85% of the compressive strength of concrete. And of course, you would have, again, if you are going to draw the three-dimensional figure for 
the concrete stress block. This will be our the width of the beam. And then this is the value for A. Okay. So again, for balance condition, tension should be equal to compression. So C should be equal to T. Where in compression is given by this equation, 0.85 Fc prime times A times B. And that is simply the volume of the compressive stress block. And then, of course, you have the tension here, wherein you have AS times FY. So this is an internal couple figure. The internal couple figure would have the distance from point C to, uh, sorry, from C to T which is equals to the distance D minus half of the value of A. So this is A over two, this is A over two. So that would mean the value from the distance from here up to this point is what you call as D minus A over two. So this is the concrete stress block, if you are going to take a look at it in the three-dimensional figure, this is where the compression force is applied. This is where the tension force is applied. So you have tension is equals to ASFY and compression is equals to 0.85 Fc prime times A times B. And again, the perpendicular distance between compression and tension, which is equals to D minus A over 2. So this is our diagram for minimum reinforcement to prevent brittle failure, wherein you have here the B or the width of the beam. And of course, you have the effective depth while this one is the area of the reinforcing steel bars. And then here we are approximating a value for D. And again, tension should be equal to compression. So since compression C is equals to T. So that would be all. We are going to discuss the example problem by next blood in our next blood see you all thank you for listening